For many, it started out as a grand passion. But some 600 teachers out of 27,000 end up quitting each year. The 2 to 2.5% attrition rate is no different from other professions. Still, efforts have been stepped up in recent years to get them to stay. The latest is a 250 million Singapore dollar package to make the profession more attractive. But if burnout is the cause, will such measures be enough to bring the passion back? Short working days, long school holidays, lots of contact time and moulding young lives. Ask any teacher that today and he or she will tell you these stereotypes of the profession are long gone. And lesson planning and homework marking no longer take up most of the teacher's non-classroom time. Today, co-curricular activities for students, project management and the drive to climb up the school rankings each year have all meant a different workload for teachers. One teacher blogger listed 10 things she hated about teaching and found 9 out of 10 have nothing to do with her students. Most of them have got to do with the system. It's very telling, isn't it? She blogged. And she wondered if she could be what she called a Duracell teacher, the type that could last and last. For another teacher, her batteries simply ran out. Stress affected my health. I couldn't sleep very well. I get headaches and I have backaches and uh, cramps. I felt like I was dragging my feet to school. Mm. And I, there were days of the week that I wish that I don't have to see this class. Annie taught in a secondary school for three years before calling it quits recently. For months, the young first-time teacher had struggled with self-doubt. Despite her passion for it, was she in the right job? What would you say was the one thing that contributed most to your stress? Uh, I would say that I was not given the subject that I actually is more interested in. The subject that I was given in was not really my forte. So I was like learning on the job and uh, I, was, I was given graduating students the moment I joined the school. So that contributed to a lot of stress. When you are dealing with graduating students, you know that at the end of the uh, year they are going for their O levels. So they have to meet a certain um, result. And if you cannot produce the result, it's quite stressful. You have to answer to the school, you have to answer to the parents. For any, the high expectations were not limited to the classroom. Even the co-curricular activities or CCA she supervised were results-driven and added to the pressure. There's an award that CCA units go for, so you have to make sure that you have enough activity to earn the award. Was there a turning point? Was there a time when you told yourself, when you questioned yourself, whether, can I do this? Can I be a teacher? I thought I could. Yeah, I thought the turning point should be last year because last year I had two graduating classes. Um, one was a normal technical uh, class and the other was a normal academic class. And they were both from the last class of their stream. No? At that time, I feel really down. <laughs> yeah, I was quite emotional. I actually broke down once because I felt that um, I was being bullied in school Yeah, because of my students. At that time, I was about 28 and my students were like 16, you know, 15, 16. I feel that, what am I doing here, being victimised by these youngsters? How were you victimised by these youngsters? In the sense that they were not doing their work, you talk to them in class, you try to teach them, they were not listening to you. And yeah, in, how would you feel if you are in front of class, then you were like um, transparent? It, it's not a good feeling. Annie admits that her inexperience with difficult students was a handicap. But this may not be all there was to it. If you are good at managing them, then it's no problem for you. You have to be uh, very firm and you have to show them that you mean business. But it's not like being fierce with them. So it's a lie that I couldn't figure out myself. Do you think that other younger teachers would have the same problem as you? I think that I'm not the only one with those, this type of problems, yeah. <laughs> because I had this colleague, um, she's a mother of two, so she has to manage between her own um, family life and uh, teaching. This is her second career. So she manage, she, she, she uses certain approaches, like maybe she's more PR with her students, or, or she would like 
take more of their nonsense because she's a mother. She can maybe she she's softer in this sense. Yeah, but she does share with me that actually she's um, very angry with the students, but she knows that by getting angry with them, it will not like win them over. So she's like using a lot of patience to try to win them over. Yeah. So so what you're saying is that it's not so much the age but life experience. Yeah, yeah. I would feel so. Yeah, and your own personality. Perhaps more life experiences could have also helped Annie better handle another source of stress. Parents, who some teachers may say are the toughest customers in a service-driven industry. Annie recounted what happened when she called a parent to inform her that her son had not turned up for a school activity. I said, uh, it's my responsibility to inform you, you know, because we are going out of the school for this activity, so I do not want you to think that your son is with us while he could be outside playing with his friends. But she, was, she just went on and on and said that, why are you telling me this now? I don't need to know this. You should, have, you should go and look for my son. You should ensure that he's in school and um, with you all during the activity and things like that. Well, at that point, when the parent accused you of not being responsible, how did you feel? Uh, honestly, I was not angry with her because I could actually overhear her scolding and understand. But I was like, I've, I was feeling quite puzzled that why is this parent, you know, like, instead of being worried for the son, it's actually throwing a temper and then it's like, I have to listen to her kind of grumbles and her scoldings, yeah. So all I did was to, because she actually said that she wants to call the school and find out what kind of teacher am I uh, by letting her son know, get away from the activity and not be able to ensure that he's there for the activity. So, so I was like at a loss, in, really I was at a loss. I, I didn't know how to deal with this parent. In the year 2004, some 110 new teachers quit the service before completing the three-year bond they must serve upon graduating from the country's teacher training program. Annie completed her bond despite her burnout. What was the worst part about this stress? What was the worst part about being burnout? Being dry. You really felt no passion for the job. I felt that maybe I was uh, shortchanging the students. Mm. So if they had another teacher instead of me, they could have done better in their examinations. After the break, a retired teacher speaks out on what he sees as another source of burnout among teachers. When the ranking was uh, introduced, teachers began to feel uh, under a lot of pressure. The other day, a student SMSed me. He said, Thank you for the two years of guidance. I will remember you forever. My eyes welled up. That SMS from a grateful student so touched a teacher, she blocked about it. The truth of the matter is, apart from examination results, a teacher's impact on a student's life is something one can't see till many years down the road. So like many other jobs, teachers are rewarded according to a performance review and ranking system. But some have asked if this is the best way for the profession. Ho Kong Lun is a retired teacher with 40 years of experience. He agrees that performance reviews are needed to separate excellent workers from mediocre ones. But he is concerned that priorities are not always set correctly. Teachers may end up chasing after the wrong targets and in the end, their energies are spent away from the students they are guiding. What happens when teachers are caught up, are too caught up in the current ranking system? They feel that they have to do much more and a lot of time that they spend will be uh, about how they can do better than the other teachers because after all, they'll be ranked against other teachers. And uh, if you have something that's special and, and catch the eye of the people who mean your reporting officer or the principal or vice principal in the school, then you will most probably get higher marks. Right? But if you are the good background, background worker, you are hardworking, you are diligent, but you're not high profile, that stands against you, actually. So it is fostered, the, the ranking system has fostered a very competitive situation amongst the teachers themselves. Yes, definitely. If some teachers, at least, have problems with the current ranking system, mm -hmm. then what is the solution? What would you recommend? What would be a better ranking system? Actually, the ranking system on paper is fine. But because there are too many things that we have looked into to rank the teachers, I will still go back to the basic that you rank a teacher according to his ability to make a difference to the children in the classroom. 
He can go for courses, he can go for sharing, but that should not form a very big part of the appraiser. The retiree who won the Caring Teacher Award in the year 2000 was particularly rankled by one aspect of the appraisal and ranking system. Do you know of teachers who, in your opinion, are very good educators, but who have suffered under this ranking system? Yes. There was a Chinese teacher who was very hardworking. He was meticulous in his work. And he, uh, he was ordinary in the sense that he was not high profile. You see, when he came to ranking, he was ranked at the lowest 5%. He went to see the principal and he says, no, you have to consider that I work very hard. I brought glory to the school. I have done wonders for the school, for the children. They have done well in the examination. The principal told him this. That's only in the past. <laughs> ranking takes into consideration what you can do now and what is it you can do in the future. The potential. For an old man like him, <laughs> he's looking and says, potential, I'm going to retire. <laughs> In your years of experience, have you come across people who became so burnt out that they drop out of the service, they become disillusioned with teaching itself? Oh yes, I visited friends who have uh, been on medical leave for long periods of time, sometimes half a year, sometimes one year. They would draw the curtain, they would not entertain any visitors, they would not do anything except sit at home and either cry or be teary. And that's terrible. And Sounds like trauma to me. Yeah, it's trauma because it leads to that. And there are teachers who have retired on that because they just can't cope anymore. Today, one third of the teachers in Singapore are aged 30 years or younger. Despite incentives like gratuities, more competitive salaries and enhanced sabbatical schemes, retaining them remains a big challenge. Kong Loon says the recent $250 million package for the teaching service will help, but there is concern the workload may increase as a result. For the young ones, especially if he or she is ter tertiary educated, I can leave, I give uh, one month notice, or I just pay back. If it's a bond, I just pay and I go. But they are the people who should be there because some of these are very highly passionate and very capable workers. Exactly. We have also heard of young teachers mm -hmm. who experience burnout yeah. when the new order of things is supposed to be tailored to bring out their potential mm -hmm. more. Why is that so? You see, young ones, they have their own ideas of how they should do their teaching and how they should carry out things. And they may disagree with what the principal may want to do. So therein lies a problem because when you are very com committed, you have all the motivation and just you just don't see the reward, you don't see the result, then you get disillusioned. And as comments on the teachers' intranet forum and blogs show, enhanced sabbatical schemes do not always work. While the intention is good, teacher bloggers like Pi per se, implementation on the ground is another matter altogether. Unable to get her principal's approval for a year's no-pay leave to pursue her master's, she will be resigning from the service. Support from the bosses, we all need that to get our work done and teachers are no different. After the break, find out what some schools have to say. I think uh, we must be very open uh, and non-judgmental because uh, we all make mistakes and we all learn through our own mistakes.